Wake up on the right side of your radio. Henry Hinton and Talk of the Town. Henry Hinton on 103.7 WTIB. Okay, welcome back. Uh, Talk of the Town here, uh, second hour here on Tuesday, uh, Thursday morning, October, April the 2nd. I can't get anything right. <laughs> Thursday morning, April the 2nd. And we're moving into Easter weekend. Good to have everybody here. Carly Swain is here. Morning. How are you this morning? Doing well. Nice I called it Tuesday this morning, too, when we yeah. started out. Uh, Trent McGee is here with sports. Good morning, McGee. Good morning. McGee, McGee looks very uh, springy this Sharp. morning. He's got the... Sharp uh, dressed man. You know? Got the slightly mismatching tie on with the... What's mismatched about this? Orange and green. I don't know. I don't that's, know not, that's not orange. See, it's that's coral. Your, your eyes are mismatched, because it's that's coral. not orange. It's coral. It's what? That's not orange. That's coral. I so, knew that. Yeah, sure you did. Yeah. Okay. Right. Uh, senator Richard Burr is here live in the studio with us, and uh, the senator had the good sense to wear purple tie down in eastern North Carolina Sorry. this morning. Uh, he's a huge ECU fan, and uh, he actually knew that Wake Forest had a basketball team. Shut Carly. up. Okay. Seriously, I didn't know. I'm not trying to be insulting. I did not know. I find that very hard to believe, but I'm going to just glaze over it and let it go because today's your last day with us. Thanks, We're very so generous. And uh, <laughs> Senator, she's moving to... Chapel Hill, which is probably where she should move, but, but we're going to, <laughs> we are going to miss you dearly, I'm miss and you we guys. and we wish you the best of luck. Thank you so much. Could, <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> and getting hit by a senator now. I'm not wow. going to repeat that because wow. that might cost you votes. What you just said, I'm not <laughs> <laughs> Senator Burr just made an off uh, off mic uh, comment that <laughs> could be detrimental to his reelection campaign. So. <laughs> I hate to tell you, Senator, but there are more Carolina voters than Wake Forest voters. You need to remember that. <laughs> <laughs> Senator Richard Burr is here live in the studio with us, and we're going to get to him in just a couple of minutes. So we're very excited about that. A uh, couple of things to take care of. Uh, first of all, I want to remind you of our uh, 94.3 The Game, our live show coming up on uh, Monday afternoon, 5 to 7. Mark Pascal and the guys will be doing a national championship uh, pregame show live from tiebreaker sports bar and grill we're going to be out there you know who we're going to try to and if he's listening i haven't gotten to him yet but i was asked yesterday to get dave lebo to come by and be on the show on uh i don't think i think i think jeff lebo will probably be in indianapolis but uh dave lebo who is uh, infinitely more entertaining than uh, than jeff lebo dave lebo as uh, jeff's father and we're going to try to get him to stop by and then someone is going you know this is uh, this is the final game mcgee and how many people are in the bracket at this point that have a chance to take it, to take the championship and uh, win our trip to Las Vegas on uh, Monday? I think about eight right now of those top, t top ten. I still, think eight of those top ten in it. have about have a pretty equal chance to still win out. So uh, Monday is the deadline, of course, and uh, we'll be giving away the trip on um, – we might hang around and do it Monday night after the game. I'm not going to, but the guys from uh, 94.3, the game might. And uh, we'll, the winner of the uh, trip to Las Vegas will be announced, and we'll have it for you here on the show on Tuesday morning. And again, thanks to all of our sponsors of our Battle of the Brackets during uh, all of the uh, NCAA basketball tournament. Winner Chevrolet, Caraway Office Solutions, Boyette Orthopedics, Mellow Mushroom, Spain Telecom, Mercer Glass, and Greenville Auto World. And again, we'll be live at Tiebreakers uh, Sports Bar and Grill 5 to 7 on Monday. Come on out and be a part of it. No show tomorrow. Tomorrow's Good Friday. We're going to take the day off. And uh, then we'll be back here Monday morning, Monday and Tuesday. And then Wednesday is the big Greenville Community Summit. And we'll be at the Greenville Convention Center live that morning. I hadn't told you this yet, but we're going to be doing the show live. I found out yesterday. You did. So we'll be live at the Convention Center from 7 to 9 that morning. And then the Community Summit begins at 10 that morning. Five consecutive hours, five different panel discussions, community leaders talking about the top issues uh, in Greenville. So we'll be telling you more about that as the uh, morning continues and as we get closer to it next Wednesday. All right, nine minutes after eight. Let's get a break uh, in, and then we're going to come back, and Carly Swain will have our news headlines for us. It is uh, Thursday, April the 2nd. Coming up live this morning in the studio, Senator Richard Burr is here with us. Going to be interviewing the senator in just a few minutes. Stay with us. Having a vision of what really matters is how we succeed. Keeping an eye on the ball, seeing all the things that we need. Focus 
Is it time for a new car or truck? Welcome to East Carolina Chrysler Dodge Jeep. Come on inside. It is Ram Truck Month and we have over 100 new Rams for you to choose from. That is the largest selection in the East. You also want to check out the new lineup of Jeeps from the Wrangler to the new Grand Cherokee. Jeep is the hottest brand on the market this spring and we've got a great selection to choose from. We'll see you at East Carolina Chrysler Dodge Jeep across from the Cracker Barrel in Greenville. Top Dog Academy is Eastern North Carolina's complete dog training facility. Top Dog provides an excellent environment for dogs of all ages with training services and work week daycare. Top Dog is located on Highway 43 South, just four miles from Bells Fork, and features a comfortable, healthy environment and a spacious facility for daycare and a brand new, beautiful facility for training. Call 752-8215 or visit topdogonline.com. Come on out Highway 43 South to Top Dog Academy, where we know dogs. Stallings Mobile and Mini Storage Company is locally owned and operated serving all of Pitt and surrounding counties. Stallings Storage has all the standard sizes and also offers 20 by 40 units with 12 by 12 doors for all your large storage needs. Stallings Storage is the only local company providing mobile units 8 by 15, 8 by 10, or 5 by 8 delivered to your site. They deliver, pick up, and store it for you. It's that easy. No need to send your business out of town when your mobile storage needs can be met right here with people that you know. Hi, I'm Eddie Stallings, Stallings Mobile and Mini Storage. I'd like to invite you all out to visit our facility, check out our mobile storage units. We can bring them out to your home or business, leave them, let you fill them up, bring them back and store them or take them to your next site. Please call us at 321-2300 or visit our website, stallingsstorage.com. And as always, we are pirates supporting pirates. Go Pirates. This used to be their teenager's room, which, you know, they didn't see a lot of because the door was always closed. And now it's their empty nest, waiting for new memories. It's the starting over that we love at Shaw Floors. And why we work so hard to put a floor beneath their feet that's as timeless, durable, and, well, as awesome as they are. Boyd's Carpet, 115 West Fire Towel Road in Winterville. Call them at 13 after 8 on Talk of the Town on 103.7 and 94.1. Uh, Senator Richard Burr coming up here in just a minute. First, though, our news update from WITN. And with that, should we have a swan song in the background? Here is, <laughs> here is Carly Swing with our local news update. Good morning, Carly. Good morning, Ed. 41 degrees outside of Greenville. 48 in New Bern. Temperature rising at 8.13 on this Thursday morning. Here's your WITN news update. A woman rushed to the hospital after troopers say a car hit her while she was riding her bike. They say last night a car hit 24-year-old Ricky Bullard as she was trying to cross Highway 70 at the intersection with Williams Road in Craven County. That's in the James City area. Officials say the bicyclist did not have the right of way. She was also not wearing her helmet. Bullard was taken to Carolina East with serious injuries. And at last check, the hospital could not update us on her condition. Troopers are not filing charges against the car driver. One man behind bars today charged with selling drugs near a school, 26-year-old Nigel Hemby of Greenville, is at the Pitt County Detention Center facing multiple charges involving selling and delivering coke within 1,000 feet of a school. He's being held today under a $50,000 bond. Police say two teens were shooting street lamps with stolen guns when a house was hit by one of the bullets. Gregory McLeod and Ian Sayers were in court yesterday morning for those charges. Greenville officers say that people who live in the Brook Valley neighborhood saw the teens firing at street lamps around 1 Wednesday morning. When responding to the shots fired call, officers say they then found a home on Merrill's Bone Circle that had been hit. Police say they found the teens in a car nearby with a shotgun and a rifle with them. Investigators say McLeod actually stole the guns two days earlier from a home on 
on East 2nd Street. And because of that, he's also now facing some additional charges. Finally, a $50 million budget cut looming for the UNC school system. And in response, one department at ECU is now making some changes. The English department there is canceling many of their courses starting this fall. Dean William Downs says that one course most students take that usually has 80 sections will only have 53 in August. Plus, the department has made the choice not to have about eight fixed-term faculty members come back to teach. Nonetheless, Down says they do feel confident they will still meet student demand. The 2% budget cut is part of the governor's budget recommendations, which the legislature will debate and possibly change this summer. That's a look at your WITN News update at 8.15 on this Thursday morning. Henry, back to you. All right, let's check our weekend weather as we head into a good Friday and Easter weekend. Here's McGee with the update. It's looking pretty good overall for your Friday. 83 degrees for the high, a 20% chance of late-day showers. Lows in the mid-60s for tomorrow night for your Saturday. Better chance of rain, but only really during the morning hours. A, uh, about a 30 40% chance, a high of 67 degrees. Lows in the low 40s for your Sunday. Plenty of sunshine on tap with a high of 69 degrees and lows in the upper 40s. All right, our news and weather update of service this hour of our new sponsor this morning on the program, Greenville Country Club, the new Greenville Country Club. If you have not joined yet, uh, you may know that the uh, the deadline, the original deadline for the uh, the introductory rates was April 1st. They were hoping to get 200 members signed. They, they, they came up, I was there yesterday, they came up to about 192. So they have agreed to extend... The introductory rate for a limited time. So here's what you need to do. You need to call Greenville Country Club today and talk to them. The, uh, the, the introductory rates are still in effect, but only for a limited time. You can join now with no initiation fee and no monthly minimum, $250 a month for a full family membership. That's an incredible deal and the best value you're going to find anywhere if you like to play a beautiful golf course and have a great pool and uh, casual dining for your family and that kind of thing. 250 a month for full family membership and no monthly minimum and no initiation fee. Membership includes full use of the club's facilities, including golf, pool, tennis for your entire family, and the Greenville Country Club under new management and new ownership. Also, the $200 per month uh, uh, junior membership for people under the age of 35 also still available for a limited time, and corporate memberships are still available as well. Call Greenville Country Club or stop by and see it. I played the court. The greens are perfect. I played the course last weekend, absolutely beautiful, and uh, Greenville Country Club is going to be better than ever under new ownership and new management, and uh, the introductory rates still available, but just probably for a little while longer, so you need to join. 17 after 8, I want to say goodbye to Carly. We love you. We, uh, we wish you luck, and we hope you'll come back and see us. Of course. you got to come see me, too. I doubt it, but... <laughs> I do have a few meetings over there from time. Maybe we'll, maybe we'll get together over there. In Durham. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> All right, Carly, thank you. Thanks, guys. All right, 18 after, after this break, Senator Richard Burr joins us live here in the studio. We will be right back with more Talk of the Town. Stop making high interest payments and swap into a new Toyota with a lower interest rate at Greenville Toyota during the One for Everyone sales event. Get the lower interest rate and payments as low as $159 a month. Give Greenville Toyota just 15 minutes and we can lower your payment. What if you could make this or this with less of this and definitely less of this and without this? Let Ann show you how with this. A great taste without the guesswork. Add Ann's chicken, vegetable, ham, or beef base to a variety of dishes. Deviled eggs, potato salad, and even coleslaw are taken to a whole new level by using Ann's The One dressing. Or easily liven up your favorite meat or seafood with Ann's The One sauce. Homemade, made easy. Look for this label at your local grocer or annsdumplings.com for more ideas. When you're on the go, it's Trade Wilco. No matter where you go in Eastern Carolina, there's sure to be an attractive and always clean Trade Wilco Hess station nearby. For the absolute lowest prices on gas, groceries, and travel necessities, stop at any of the Trade Wilco Hess stations throughout Eastern Carolina. Keep your eyes on the road, but remember to look for the green and white Hess sign. The best part? No one supports the ECU Pirates more. So when you're on the go, it's Trade Wilco. Look at you two, taking a flying leap off the high dive of life and starting your own home business and nailing it. The term busy is just taking on a whole new meaning. At Shaw Floors, we love busy. 
It's why we work so hard to put a resilient floor beneath your feet that's as awesome as you are. Boyd's Carpet, 115 West Fire Towel Road in Winterville. Call them at 321-7066. Are you a bargain hunter always looking for the best deals in Greenville? Start your hunt on Saturday, April 25th at the St. James UMC Spring Fling Yard Sale. This massive yard sale opens at 6.30 and is the start of a day-long event with a plant sale, bake sale, craft bazaar, and live auction at 5. All proceeds benefit local charities, so come join our St. James family on April 25th at 2000 East 6th Street for unique finds, great bargains, and excellent food. For more information, call 752-6154 or visit STJ Connect. Connect.org. Uptown Greenville is the voice of the downtown. We exist to promote quality, cultural, residential, and economic development. I am Uptown. I am Uptown. I am Uptown. It's alive. Safe. It's awesome. A great place to work. We are Uptown. We are Uptown. We are Uptown. Student at East Carolina University, co-founder of eAudit.com. Sergeant with the Center City Unit. Owner of the Varsity Club. Our downtown has a name, and it's Uptown. I'm good like that. <laughs> Stop making high interest payments and swap into a new Toyota with a lower interest rate at Greenville Toyota. During the One for Everyone sales event, get the Greenville Toyota Advantage. Oil changes, tire rotations, and courtesy shuttle service for life. Rush over to Greenville Toyota today. All right, back on Talk of the Town here on uh, Thursday morning, and uh, we're ending our our broadcast week with a bang. We've got a huge uh, in-studio guest this morning. We're happy to have one of the uh, most famous Wake Forest football players in Demon Deacon history. And that's probably actually true, other than maybe Brian Piccolo. I'm trying to think of who else might have been. McGee, help me. He, he may not, he's not necessarily famous because of football, but he's one of the most famous, wouldn't you say, Wake Forest football players? United States Senator Richard Burr joins us live in the studio. Good morning, sir. How are you? Good morning, Henry. The most famous football player in the Senate from Wake Forest. <laughs> How about that? That, that? that narrows the field a little bit. <laughs> How you doing? I'm doing good. It's nice well, it's to good see to be you. in Eastern North Carolina. Good to have you here. I understand you were down in New Bern visiting some friends last night. Was in New Bern. Uh, General Overholt and company. Had He's an opportunity man. to fly the F-35 simulator yesterday and didn't didn't, didn't crash it. That's good to hear. I got my wings <laughs> and uh, had an opportunity to go down to Camp Lejeune and spend two hours with some uh, real special Marines yesterday that do a uh, yeoman's job of uh, keeping this country safe. Great, great. It's nice to have you here. You, you know, we have not had you on, uh, even on the phone, I don't think, since you became the uh, chairman of the Senate Intelligence Committee and now one of the highest-ranking members of the United States Senate. So congratulations on that, I guess. <laughs> I can't imagine what it must be like and what you're, what you're dealing with on a day-to-day -day basis now when you're talking about foreign policy, for crying out loud. we got a lot of issues in this world. Well, we do have a lot of issues. You know, I've, I've served on the Intelligence Committee in the House of the Senate now for since 2000, so 15 years. And it used to be uh, post 9-11, there were two or three things that every day when I went to bed, if one of them happened, tomorrow was going to be a bad day. Now it's about 30 things. You know, we've got ISIL in 12 countries around the world. We've got Iran playing in about eight or nine countries. And um, it's odd. We partner with them in Iraq to try to defeat ISIL. We fight against them, partnering with the Saudis in Yemen. And we're at a negotiating table in Switzerland trying to negotiate uh, a nuclear proliferation deal. It is almost surreal. And uh, the fact is that uh, I question whether there'll be an outcome to, to Switzerland in these talks. But I also question whether anything we agree to, we can trust. So uh, it, it's, a, it's an interesting dynamic right now. But let me just say this, because I, th I, I think people forget it sometimes. The rest of the world is watching what the United States does. In the absence of us leading, we're going to see more and more countries make a decision like Saudi Arabia did, where they put together a coalition of 10 Gulf states. They started uh, combat uh, operations in Yemen, and they never called the United States to ask if they could. They just took the lead and did it. Uh, if that's what the president wants, then, then he's gotten it. But the reality is that we're going to see chaos emerge in more places in the world because we're not there to control it, to contain it, to sanction it, um, and to actually be a full-fledged partner. 
for a guy in the intelligence business like me, I want as many partners around the world as I can get because it increases the number of eyes, number of ears we've got. Uh, when you eliminate partners, when you say you go do it on your own, you don't have to be with us, then you've eliminated our ability, my ability uh, to get the information in that keeps Americans safe. We would, uh, just to ask you this question, when uh, you, you came in and sat down, I asked, are you involved uh, with Senator with with uh, Secretary of State Kerry on these talks that are going on in Switzerland right now, uh, I would think that being the chairman of the Senate Intelligence Committee, they would be keeping you apprised of what's going on. But I was a little surprised at your answer on that. So, so the administration's off doing this, but not including you as the ranking member of the Senate on foreign affairs now with uh, the Senate Intelligence Committee. You're not in contact with Senator Kerry on these uh, talks with Iran about to build nuclear weapons? Not only uh, chair of the Intelligence Committee, chair of foreign affairs, the Speaker of the House, the majority leader of the Senate, none of them have any idea of any of the specifics that are being negotiated in Switzerland. Is it, do you do you find that unusual? Is am I am I wrong about that, or does that worry you? Like well, it does I, me? I said to you when we sat down, the American people I think find it rather odd that um, the Senate's required to sign off on trade agreements that any administration signs onto, but not a nuclear proliferation deal. Yeah, now, this is almost crazy. surreal. Yeah, it really is. It really is. You know, we um, you you turn on the television and you see uh, Americans being beheaded. Um, the the whole Islamic State thing seems to be rising to a new level. Is it just that we live in a communication era now where all of that is right on our television and computer screens, or is 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 the Islamic State and terrorism coming back to all new levels at this point? Well, let's just say that ISIL is the most brutal, horrific terrorist group the world's ever seen. And it, it's displayed in their acts. <clears throat> but let me remind you and your listeners, Henry, a year and a half ago, ISIL didn't exist. Uh, they're in existence today and probably 30 to 40,000 strong for, one, for two reasons. One, money, because they were able to rob some banks in the Middle East when they, uh, when they started taking geography. And two, social media. This is an organization that has grown totally through social media. Their whole recruitment mechanism globally is social media. Wow. Their whole ability to get their message out about who they are and what they do is all driven by social media. They don't pay for a thing. And um, they control the largest geography and have the most money and are the most equipped of any terrorist organization in modern times that we have faced. So for the president to say JV team, uh, I call that a, st a big staff mistake uh, uh, some 12 months ago but not to take them seriously as a threat, uh, not to look at them and, and not talk about containment, talk about elimination, is a huge long-term mistake. Now we're no longer talking about yours and my generation being affected by this. We're talking about our kids and our grandchildren because this is, this is going to take a long time. And when we talk about negotiating a, a framework of an agreement with the Iranians, uh, what we've got to think about in the context of that is what is the impact long term? If the impact of a bad deal is that Saudi Arabia, the United Arab Emirates, Qatar, Turkey all say, well, for us to be comfortable and safe, we've got to have a nuclear weapon, then we've gone from trying to keep nuclear proliferation from happening to fueling nuclear proliferation like no administration and no generation ever has. And we could wake up with five or six countries in that region with nuclear capabilities in one of the most economically strategic regions in the world. Now, the United States economy is not going to be affected in a huge way because we've become so domestic production, our domestic production has uh, gotten so good on petroleum. But how about Japan? How about the rest of the world that's 100 percent reliant on that uh, footprint in the Middle East for their energy uh, needs? they are impacted in a great way. The mm -hmm. global, global economy is. Senator Richard Burr, live in the studio with us this morning. It's great to have him here this morning. You know, when you, now that you're the chairman of the Senate Intelligence Committee, I think about what your day must be like on a day-to-day -day basis. And, you know, you, you talk about allies and, and enemies, and it's, it's just hard to know probably where the next problem is going to arise when you're talking about the Middle East. But you also have to look at Russia now. 
uh, you know, uh, Mitt Romney said it in the uh, campaign in 2012, you know, when they said, what do you think is the biggest uh, dom- the foreign pro- uh, problem we're going to have and, and Russia? And, and how much of this is being fueled by Russia? Russia clearly in cahoots with Iran at this point. Who's the most dangerous? You got Syria, you got uh, Iran, but is Russia really making a comeback and, and making an effort to become a, the, the superpower that they once were? Is that what we're seeing right now? Well, I, I think the short answer is yes. The long answer is that they were dead in the water. And the president opened the door when he moved that red line in Syria and allowed Vladimir Putin to walk on stage and to come up with a, a, a solution. And when he allowed Putin to play that role, he put Putin back on the, the, the international stage. And Putin has played it well. He's very theatrical. They've got uh, money. They've got power. Um, as we talk about the F-35 fighter that I was down flying, the simulator, fifth generation uh, fighter aircraft. Well, Russia's trying to come out with their fifth generation. Chinese are trying to come out with their fifth generation. Technology is no longer an advantage to us. Communication is no longer an advantage to us. They're every bit the formidable, formidable opponent and, and enemy that we've had in the past. The difference is um, that they're extremely good, probably as good as we are, at cyber warfare. And uh, we've had U.S. companies and uh, financial institutions attacked by the Russians for years. But they're now on the level that we are, and this becomes a, a, a true threat. So cybersecurity is the new avenue and the new area of great concern to uh, to us in Washington and to American business. Uh, you know, we, do, we don't go uh, probably one month uh, without hearing about uh, a penetration to somebody's system. I like to say there are two people that uh, uh, have been uh, affected by cyber terrorism, those that admit it and those that don't admit it. Yeah, exactly. There's a lot of bad stuff out there now. What keeps you up at night the most? What I don't know. And for an intel uh, agency, um, our biggest challenge is to know everything. And the fact is that you can't know everything. So uh, we do extremely well with the things that we do know. And I think every time we pick somebody up off the street, whether they're in New York or whether they're in Charlotte, North Carolina, we have a very good reason to believe that they're tied in some way to terrorism. And in most cases, we're well ahead of uh, any operational plans that they might have. But... uh, the only way that we're able to glean information is if we're able to talk to people and, and interview people, let's say, um, that, that are in terrorism as a profession. And they're the ones that are able to share with us. You know, we've, we, we've got this constant debate that goes on about the future of Guantanamo Bay. Mm-hmm. Well, there are two inmates at Guantanamo Bay that in the past 60 days have said, hey, I'd like to talk. I've got some pertinent stuff. That's 14 years later. No kidding. There's a reason to keep it there. Yeah, and there's yeah. a reason to keep these individuals accessible because they may have a certain key that we need to unlock a door that we find a, a plot behind. Good stuff. All right, we got to get a break in. We're going to take a break and come back with another segment with uh, Senator Richard Burr live in the studio with us this morning. 27 now in front of nine. Senator's got some uh, things to do and people to see in eastern North Carolina today, so we're going to get him out of here in a little bit. But uh, i got a few more questions for you when we come back, so uh, let's do one more segment. We'll be right back with, with Senator Burr. Is it time for a new car or truck? Welcome to East Carolina Chrysler Dodge Jeep. Come on inside. It is Ram Truck Month, and we have over 100 new Rams for you to choose from. That is the largest selection in the East. You also want to check out the new lineup of Jeeps, from the Wrangler to the new Grand Cherokee. Jeep is the hottest brand on the market this spring, and we've got a great selection to choose from. We'll see you at East Carolina Chrysler Dodge Jeep, across from the Cracker Barrel in Greenville. Gordon's Golf and Ski, carrying all the top names in skiing, snowboarding, and golf for over 44 years. Stop in Gordon's for some cool winter savings. Snowboard and ski pants, coats and bibs, all 40% off. With spring just around the corner, Gordon's is getting you ready for the link. Golf shirts, 50% off. Golf shoes, 30% off. Gordon's service department will get you back on the course with the fastest golf repair in town. Receive a free hat and glove with any purchase over $150 only at Gordon's Golf and Ski, Greenville. Hey everybody, guess who's never danced with a girl before? Yeah, this guy. Come on buddy, on the 2-4. Two 2-4. Four. Two four. There you go. 
At Shaw Floors, we know the little moments matter. They're why we work so hard to put a carpet beneath his feet that's as awesome as he is. Boyd's Carpet, 115 West Fire Tower Road in Winterville. Call them at 321-7066. And now, homemade made easy with Ann. Spend more time with the family, not in the kitchen with this quick recipe. Boil water, add Ann's chicken base and butter, add Ann's flat pastry dumplings, add pre-cooked chicken, add flour to thicken, season with salt and pepper. Done, homemade, made easy. Look for this label at your local grocer or annsdumplings.com for more ideas. could win an out of the blue party with rock stars like fallout boy follow us on twitter and hashtag out of the blue with a picture of pepsi this isn't a park and there is no game of fetch these boys are here on business and this is their office if you have hunting dogs in pitt county you should know that we're working just as hard to provide for them as they are for you as part of the new canine control ordinance dogs actively involved in training field trials or seasonal hunting do not have to be under physical restraint when on your property or property you lawfully occupy to learn how the law applies to your hunting dogs just visit our website pittcountync.gov Senator Richard Burr live in the studio with us here this morning. It's great to have the uh, senator in eastern North Carolina. He's going to be around visiting some folks today, and uh, we're talking about his new role. He's been on the Senate Intelligence Committee for a long time, but now chairman of the Senate Intelligence Committee. And um, that's a big, big job and an important job in the United States Congress for sure. Uh, what's the uh, – th there's an article in National Journal yesterday. Did you see this? No. Article in National Journal yesterday – uh, about you, and it said that that, uh, that the sense was that you now believe that foreign policy is going to be a bigger issue in the 2016 campaign than the economy. And it's been a long time in this country uh, and in this state since anything's been a bigger issue than the economy. Sure. But with all the things we're just talking about, um, uh, I don't know if you told the National Journal that or whether they picked up some of your comments or whatever, but do you believe that? Do you think that uh, the voters are going to have this on their minds when they go to the polls next year? You know, Henry, I do, and I think that uh, national security was the turning point in the 2014 election. I, I think that's why many of the pollsters looked at these Senate races around the country and they, they missed the projection by, by such a wide margin. Um, in the last three weeks... Uh, the country began to look at, at national security in a, a pivotal way, especially uh, with women. And that swung the direction of their vote and their support. And we ended up uh, picking up uh, nine seats. Uh, we have 54 in the United States Senate. Nobody projected that. Uh, and the reality is that national security only becomes more and more a concern of the average uh, person in America because of what they see and read, because of what they hear every day. And um, as, as the president goes through these negotiations in Switzerland, I think it becomes even more and more relevant that uh, national security is the focus of, of their concerns. And um, I think it's safe to say that uh, our traditional partners seem to be the ones that are questioning uh, our commitment to uh, security more than our enemy is, which is – it's a concern of mine. Yeah. Your name gets thrown around to maybe be on the GOP ticket every time it comes around. You were uh, rumored to possibly be under consideration by John McCain. You were rumored to be in, under consideration by Mitt Romney uh, in 2012. Um, what's your interest level in taking another step? Well, one, typically those rumors come out of people that would like to have my Senate seat. <laughs> so um, I think there may be something advantageous to them. Uh, my wife would make sure that that never happened. Uh, I, I have no desire to do it. Uh, I think in a perfect world, 
Uh, Henry, I might have chosen not to run for re-election now. I, I think that the generational change is important. Um, Forty percent of the United States Senate is in their first term. Uh, we have had a generational change, but more importantly, uh, when I looked at the, down the, the the aisle of, of members of the intelligence committee on both sides, I found that the chairman and I, the vice chairman and I, were the only ones that had served on the intelligence committee uh, during 9/11. So uh, there's an institutional knowledge there that's advantageous to that committee and to the institution from a national security standpoint. And I still feel like I've got something to still contribute legislatively, and um, I, th I think as long as I feel that way, then I'm going to stay there. But I don't look at retiring as a career out of the United States Senate. I look at doing it out of the private sector. So I can't wait to get back in it at some point. <laughs> but you are running. You are running for re-election. I am running for re-election for in 2016. Yeah. And and the Democrats don't have a candidate. I mean, it's interesting. We have not. We hear rumors. Uh, in fact, there was a rumor. Uh, who was it on the show earlier this week saying that Democrats are recruiting very hard, trying to get Kay Hagan to run against you? I find that hard to believe, but uh, that Kay Hagan would consider a run after just getting beat by Tom Tillis. But uh, at this moment, uh, the Democrats, um, I don't think they've got anybody that's willing to step up yet. Well, they'll have somebody. I mean, it, it, this is this is North Carolina. I, I don't think it's a purple state like my tie. Um, I, th I think it's a red state, and all you need to do is look at the fact that we've got two uh, United States senators that are Republican. We've got a governor. We've got a supermajority in the House, supermajority in the Senate. And how the, the talking heads in Washington perceive that to be a purple state, I don't know. But, um, you know, I, I've got the challenge to go out over the next year and a half and explain to voters in North Carolina what it is I want to accomplish, uh, what I have accomplished and what I'd still like to do. If I do that successfully, it really doesn't matter who I run against. I think my chances are good, but you don't take anything for granted. And uh, uh, today, social media uh, brings a whole new <laughs> dynamic to elections. Uh, you said that I read the article in National Journal. Uh, my wife tells me not to read anything, especially <laughs> especially my Facebook page. Yeah. Uh, that might make me go out and be suicidal. <laughs> Senator Richard Burr, you know, uh, you, you do have Tom Tillis there now, two Republicans uh, from North Carolina in the United States Senate. And uh, you both, uh, I know, met with some folks from North Carolina recently. I know the NAACP and others have criticized you, Tom Tillis, for not being willing to step up and support uh, President Obama's uh, choice for uh, Attorney General to follow Eric Holder, Loretta Lynch. Uh, you had meetings with them. They came to you. There's been a lot of, um, lot, speaking of social media, a lot of uh, information about that. Where are you on that? Well, I, I stated exactly like I did to them, and even though I stated publicly over and over and over again, for some reason the Raleigh News Observer still can't get it right. Uh, I read it uh, once again, I think this morning uh, in, in yesterday's uh, news. Uh, I sat down with, uh, with Loretta Lynch over three months ago, and I only had one question of her. How would your agenda at the Justice Department be different than that of Eric Holder's? And she looked at me very honestly, and she said, Senator, it wouldn't be any different. Well, I voted against Eric Holder. Now, uh, if I voted against Eric Holder because I was scared of how expansive uh, his agenda might be, then to hear that it would stay that expansive, then I couldn't support Loretta Lynch. I shared that with her father. I shared it with the NAACP. I have shared it with the Raleigh News Observer. But they still blame it on voter ID in North Carolina. Right, yeah. So uh, I, I, I don't think I can make it any clearer or plainer than that. And I think I gave her every opportunity to express how, how her tenure there may be different. But let me say this. She is the most qualified, most competent nominee that this White House has sent to me in six years. Uh, so there's no doubt she, she will, I think she'll be confirmed. I think she will do a wonderful job. As a matter of fact, when we have a, a terrorist that's picked up in New York and, and I'm notified of it, the first thing I ask are, is, are they going to be sent to the Eastern District? Because she is the prosecutor in the Eastern District and she, she handles the toughest terrorism cases. But I've got to base things based upon an agency, the Department of Justice, and not on an individual. And if, uh, if, if their agenda is outside of where I think uh, historically it can be, should be, and will be, uh, then I look at the leadership and say I can't support it. So you think she'll be confirmed, but you think you'll vote against her? I will vote against yeah. her. Yeah. God bless you. 
What's on your mind? I, we got a couple minutes left. I know you got to get on with your agenda. Uh, got some visits with uh, folks around the area today. What's on your mind that I haven't uh, thrown at you that you'd want to talk about this morning? People love to hear you uh, talk about what's going on uh, with you and in, in the Senate. Well, listen, we we, we always have a talk, uh, an opportunity to talk about where we've been and where we are. Uh, I don't think we talk enough about where it is we're going. And, um, you know, I have an opportunity now in the role I'm in to, 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 I have to go around the world and I have to see people that aren't in the spotlight or the limelight. I go to places that, uh, you know, there's no sand and water. Uh, there's sand, uh, but typically there are people with guns right outside the fence. And I get an opportunity to see our kids and our grandchildren, uh, the kids that have volunteered to go into the military. Uh, the kids that are scattered all around North Carolina, put on a uniform every day or asked to go somewhere, never asked why, given a job, they do it, they come home, they never talk about it. So when I look at the future, the only thing that separates us from an unlimited opportunity in the future is policymakers putting together the right policies. Do we put in place a framework that allows these great kids to succeed at anything in life? And, uh, you know, as I look back over our history, in Vietnam, we had to turn to a draft because we couldn't get people to sign and, and con uh, a lot of consternation and concerns about that war. Well, no different than looking back now at Iraq, some of the things that are being said. Who's not complaining? The kids that were there. Uh, the kids that got to see Iraqis up close and personal. The kids that got to see ch the changes in their lives. Then we walk away. And now we're sending them back. Um, I understand how big and how great an opportunity the future is in this country. And more importantly today than before, I just I understand how great this next generation is. You know, as a parent, and I should say this to every parent, if you've sat at home and wondered, did I accomplish the right thing? Did I raise my children the right way? Are they going to emulate what, what my parents taught me? I can say, I've seen them on the firing line. I've seen them all around the world. This is a great generation that we have raised. We have every reason to be proud, but we have every reason to work harder to make sure that the infrastructure is in place to allow them to succeed in everything in life. That's a great way to end. It's great to see you. Henry, great to see you. Thank you, you for uh, being here this morning and spending some time with us, and thank you for being East North Carolina. Nice to see you. Senator Richard Burr, our friend here, and uh, I'm sure we'll be, um, the campaign's going to heat up here shortly, so we'll probably be seeing you some more. You know you're welcome here anytime. Appreciate it. Thank Good you. Good to see you. Senator Richard Burr right here live this morning in the studio. All right. Uh, coming up on 12 in front of 9 o'clock, Trent McGee has our sports update next. Stop making high interest payments and swap into a new Toyota with a lower interest rate at Greenville Toyota. During the One for Everyone sales event, get the Greenville Toyota Advantage. Oil changes, tire rotations, and courtesy shuttle service for life. Rush over to Greenville Toyota today. Stallings Mobile and Mini Storage Company is locally owned and operated serving all of Pitt and surrounding counties. Stalling Storage has all the standard sizes and also offers 20 by 40 units with 12 by 12 doors for all your large storage needs. Stalling Storage is the only local company providing mobile units 8x15, 8x10, or 5x8 delivered to your site. They deliver, pick up, and store it for you. It's that easy. No need to send your business out of town when your mobile storage needs can be met right here with people that you know. Hi, I'm Eddie Stalling, Stallings Mobile and Mini Storage. I'd like to invite you all out to visit our facility, check out our mobile storage units, we can bring them out to your home or business, leave them, let you fill them up, bring them back and store them, or take them to your next site. Please call us at 321-2300 or visit our website, stallingstorage.com. And as always, we are pirates supporting pirates. Go Pirates! I'm Henry Hinton. You've heard me talk over the years about how much I love being a patient of Dr. Thomas McIntosh. I love Carolina Vision Care because I can get my glasses in their optical department right on site. They've got one of the largest selections of frames anywhere and an in-house optical lab run by opticians that can make glasses many times in about an hour. And they accept most vision plans and insurances. And for people without vision insurance, they have their own vision plan that will save you money. Carolina Vision Care, we keep what's important inside. My prescription refills. My son shot records. My doctor's appointments. My lab results. My parents care. My chart. 
Vidant MyChart. Vidant MyChart is the secure online patient portal that lets you manage your health your way. Visit VidantMyChart.com or call 1-855-MYVIDANT to learn how you can sign up. And now, homemade made easy with Anne. Spend more time with the family, not in the kitchen with this quick recipe. Boil water. Add Anne's chicken base and butter. Add Anne's flat pastry dumplings. Add pre-cooked chicken. Add flour to thicken. Season with salt and pepper. Done. Homemade. Made easy. Look for this label at your local grocer or annsdumplings.com for more ideas. Stop making high interest payments and swap into a new Toyota with a lower interest rate at Greenville Toyota. During the One for Everyone sales event, get the lower interest rate and payments as low as $159 a month. Give Greenville Toyota just 15 minutes and we can lower your payment. Ten minutes before the top of the hour here on this Thursday Talk of the Town. Thanks again to Senator Richard Burr for being with us. Time for a sports update here on the second day of April. Throwback Thursday tonight at Clark LeClaire Stadium. ECU hosting Tulane in game one of a three-game American Athletic Conference series. Both teams with identical conference marks at one and two on the season. Tulane 19 and 10 overall. The Pirates 17 and 12 on the season. Senior left-hander Reed Love getting the start tonight for the Pirates. First pitch set for 6.30. Friday's first pitch also a 6.30 start time and Saturday's first pitch. The series finale slated for 12 noon. College basketball, Wichita State's Greg Marshall has opted to remain the Shockers head basketball coach, declining an offer from Alabama. This confirmed last night from the school's AD and his daughter via Twitter. Uh, Senator Burr, speaking of social media, it's Affects everything. Uh, representatives from Texas are deep in discussions with VCU Shaka Smart about becoming the Longhorns' next head basketball coach. And Texas officials, according to reports, will be surprised if he doesn't eventually accept an offer. And on the high school level last night, East beat the West 111-91 to in the McDonald's All-American basketball game. Kinston standout, Brandon Ingram, one of the best players in the country. If you're looking at rankings, he's ranked, I think, as the 12th best player in the country. The six foot eight Ingram is still undecided on where he will play. His college basketball has six schools on his list, and he mentioned these last night North Carolina, Duke, Kansas, Kentucky, UCLA, and NC State expected to make a decision on where he will attend school by the end of this month. So we'll find out where Brandon Ingram will play his college basketball uh, at the end or toward the end of the month of April. Hen? All right, very good. It is uh, 8 50. Thanks for taking that, by the way. I was out in the lobby. People showing up to yeah, there's a lot going greet on Richard there. Burr. <laughs> a lobby full of folks wanted to meet Richard Burr out there. So that was good. But uh, And it was great to have the senator on this morning. Wait, is he a class act or what? He really is. He really is. What a, what a, and, and now one of the uh, top leaders of our nation. And, uh, boy, he makes you feel good to hear him talk. Although it worries you to hear him talk, too, because, you know, as chairman of the Senate Intelligence Committee, you can imagine that he knows things and sees things that um, would probably – give you trouble sleeping at night yeah you ever thought about what it would be like to be elected to a job like that i should ask him this question sometime i've always wondered you know so um the day you're elected to this and you go in and they the fbi the cia comes in for your briefing and and they say well first of all we'd like to tell you give you a little history um we'd like to tell you who shot john kennedy you know, you probably get to hear all of that, you know? Right, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and, and you get to hear all the stuff that nobody really knows the answer to but has a theory of. I would think it, it, it would be life-changing. I mean, just to, oh, the yeah. stuff you hear and the stuff that you're kept abreast of, too. I, it, would, it would be something that would be... But just like, you know, he was sitting here just now, and uh, during the commercial break, he got an email from the FBI. Yeah. yeah. And he was reading it, and he, uh, he, was, he was, you know, he said, I got, I've got this email from the FBI, i got to read it. Can you imagine so, getting those every day? Well, he says he gets them every day. You know, I, so. Yeah, I mean. Crazy stuff. All right, our sports update this morning and talk of the I just got an email about cinnamon rolls and chocolate brownies in the kitchen. He got an email, <laughs> he got a, he got an email from the FBI. About possible terrorism. Yeah. yeah. So. Uh, the uh, Tire Realty and uh, Property Management team here in Greenville, Homer Tire and his guys, bring us uh, our program. Uh, they normally sponsor our Friday program since we're not going to be here tomorrow. I want to give you one of their success stories again. Here's another one of the great success stories from the, uh, the Tire Realty Group people. Christopher and Amanda 
listed their home with another. I think I used this one yesterday. Let me do this one. John and Mary wanted to sell their home quickly. These are real success stories that uh, Homer sends me, by the way. They wanted to sell it quickly as they didn't want to constantly prep their home for showing. After listing the home, Homer Tire put his incredible marketing system into action and turned to his long list of pre-qualified buyers. And John and Mary here in Greenville sold their home in 27 days. Before you list, call the people that I would call if I was going to sell my home. The Tire Realty Group, the official real estate team of the East Carolina Pirates, 758-H-O-M-E. That's 758-4663. And remember, working with Tire Realty Group doesn't obligate you to anything. If they're not doing their job, that they'll let you out of the contract free and clear. And when, when you sign the contract, you can ask about uh, this program that they offer. They'll sit down with you, agree on a price and a deadline. If the deadline passes, the home's not sold. They'll buy your home. Tire Property Management, also looking for great rental properties. Call the Tire Realty Group, 758-HOME, or visit them online at GuaranteedSellNC.com. GuaranteedSellNC.com. Now, I was going to uh, ask Senator Burr about his brackets. Ah, yeah, that would have been a good question. I, but you know what? I specifically didn't ask him about that because I thought when you're talking about beheadings in Syria— and terrorism and cyber ter- I mean, I just don't think it matters. It doesn't. And so, you know, it made. I, I thought, you know, I, I, I think it's silly for the president of the United States to make such a big deal out of it, frankly. Although, you know, I guess, you know, you, got, you can't uh, focus on all the bad stuff all the time. But the reality of it is, you know, I want guys like Richard Burr and Obama, and I want them focused on keeping America safe. And you get the feeling when you're talking to a guy like Richard Burr that that's exactly what he's focused on. And, uh, and so God bless him for all that he does uh, for us. Uh, but now I will ask you about your bracket. I still so, have Kentucky uh, winning it all, and I, and I did from day one, so they're still alive. I had Duke and Kentucky in the championship. So, um, but I had also had Arizona and Virginia, so they're both out. Yeah. And, uh, you know, I, we talked earlier this morning about the fact that uh, some of the national media has been criticized, including CNN yesterday, doing this cram down on uh, Mike Krzyzewski for saying nothing about the uh, Indiana uh, religious freedom law that all the gays are going crazy about and saying that it's a gay rights thing and all that. And, you know, what I hope, I, if Coach K wins it, I hope that he comes out afterwards and addresses it and tells people how ridiculous it was that he was criticized for not thinking about the politics of all that while he was trying to prepare to win a national championship. You know? Yeah. Just ridiculous. It is. Just ridiculous. Good to, good to know that Jeff Lebo is not boycotting if, if he's in any And I don't know right if he's now. there or not. But, you so. know, the, the truth of the matter is, I, I just want to say this one more time. I find it appalling that someone can be criticized for something they didn't say, <laughs> which is what's happening now with Mike Krzyzewski. So, you know, go win the basketball games and, and then, you know, tell those people to stick it where the sun doesn't shine. I'm with you. Uh, Don't forget, uh, tomorrow we're off, so I want to mention again that on Monday we will be live Monday at the um, Tiebreaker Sports Bar and Grill on 94.3 The Game. Our sister station, Mark Pascoe, will be doing his show live as we get ready for the national championship game on Monday night. They'll have it on the big screens there at Tiebreakers. Great food. We're going to be out there having a little food before the uh, game. And uh, the Battle of the Brackets is sponsored by Winter Chevrolet, Caraway Office Solutions, Boyette Orthopedics, Mellow Mushroom, Spain Telecom, Mercer Glass, and Greenville Auto World. They're the sponsors that made it possible for us to declare a winner in our Battle of the Brackets and send them to Las Vegas, Nevada. So we'll declare the winner of the Las Vegas Battle of the Brackets next week. Also, do not forget, one last reminder before we say goodbye, next Wednesday... Next Wednesday, 10 to 3, Greenville Convention Center, part of the Greenville Expo. Greenville Chamber of Commerce Business Expo will begin at 8 in the morning, but our Greenville Community Summit in the Convention Center begins at uh, 10 a.m. and goes for three hours. Five hours, we're going to talk about the top uh, issues and in the community with uh, a panel, one issue per hour from 10 to 3. And don't forget the noon to one hour is the hour we'll be talking about the bond referendum vote, which is coming up in November. And we'll have city council people, uh, state representatives. We'll have uh, a plethora 
of people on hand to answer your questions. All right, McGee, happy Easter to you. Same to you, man. Have a Michael, good one. have a great Easter. Everybody listening to us, uh, go to church on Sunday and uh, celebrate our risen Lord. And happy Easter to everybody. We'll see you Monday.